one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got to go there. You're getting ready to start the next meeting. Uh, for 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, once again, a uh, couple of reminders. Uh, please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. And if you can uh, direct your question by name to one of our three student athletes, we would appreciate it. And a reminder that there is no video taken within the press conference area. If you'd like to utilize the press conference video, you may download it later from the NCAA Digital Hub, or you may plug in through one of the uh, electronic media boxes in the next room. So our next press conference is with the student athletes from Indiana. We have Race Thompson. Xavier Johnson and Trace Jackson Davis. And we'll go ahead and open it up at this time for questions from the media. Start down here in front. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Trace, uh, I know we talked about this a couple of days ago too, but um, the four games in six days, 100 something points on a roll, feeling good. How much does it just help just getting on a plane and coming here and just doing it again tomorrow? Um, Really, I'm just doing what my team needs me to do to win. Um, my teammates put me in position so I can get these buckets, but um, at the same time, it's going to take a team effort the rest of the way. And um, I know my teammates are eager to get started, and I'm just going to try to continue to produce for us. Hi, Jason Quick with The Athletic. Uh, I'll go Xavier. Uh, can you just kind of describe what your guys' itinerary has been, how, how early you had to get up, what your travel has been like in getting here? Uh, I mean, we actually left right after the game uh, after, we, after we won last night, but it took, we had like an hour delay because because of weather, and then we had to switch planes and all, all the other stuff. And, and you know, you just, we just blessed to be here and, and get here and play. Uh, we got here about seven. Yeah, about seven, seven in the morning. Oh, I I I probably went to sleep for like an hour. Uh, he went to sleep for a long time. I don't know when he went to sleep, but everybody else he might even went to sleep. Yeah, uh, Trace, this is for you. Um, uh, the, the, the St. Mary's guys, uh, coaches, players, Bennett and the players, uh, compared you a lot to Drew Timmy. I'm just curious your thought. Do you think that makes sense? Do you like it, not like it? I'm just kind of curious your, your thoughts on that. I mean, yeah, Drew's a great player. Um, he's got a lot of pieces around him, but he's he's got great footwork uh, on the low block. Um, he does a lot of things for their team. So I take that as a compliment. I mean, he's a player of the year finalist. So. Um, Oh, right. Yeah, I, th I think that's a compliment. So, Trace, Charlie, Wish TV, Indy. I think we've all been on these w road trips. You know, they're, they're fun until you just want to get to the place you're going to. At what point this morning were you finally ready just to get in your ho hotel room and get to bed? Man, uh, when we got on that plane, uh, we were there, and then they're like hour delay. So we we're like, all right, we're still enjoying the win. Then all of a sudden we had to switch planes, and then. Two hours later, we're finally taking off, and then slept a little on the plane, but it was kind of bumpy. And then finally just getting here, and then the bus ride was like 30 minutes to the uh, hotels. So by that time, I was like, can we please just like get here? And then we finally got to the hotel room, and then I probably fell asleep in three minutes. So, uh, Mike Pegram from uh, Peaks.com, either race or trace. Matthias Tass from, from St. Mary's, what have you learned about him, and what are the challenges he'll present tomorrow? Um, he's a great player, honestly. Um, he does a lot of work on the low block. Um, they do a lot of split game actions to where you can't double them. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a tough battle between me and him. So, um, but I can't wait. I'm eager to, and excited to go. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a good player. Uh, strong, big man. Uh, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Uh, and I think that as a team, we'll be able to uh, key in on that and uh, take care of what we need to do. Yeah, uh, Kevin Brockway, uh, CNHI. Uh, Trace, following up on kind of the point on Timmy, uh, in um, the St. Mary's win against Gonzaga, they were really physical with him, pushing him around a lot and so forth. Uh, I'm just curious about your thoughts. You see a lot of that bit in the Big Ten, but, uh, you know, uh, that challenge, and if they're physical with you, how, how, how will you respond? Um, yeah, I just think that just playing in the Big Ten um, kind of gets you ready for moments like these, going against seven-foot, 280-pound guys night in and night out. Um, um, I feel feel like I'm gonna have to use a lot of my athleticism and my quick feet. So, but um, I hope they're physical. I think they're, that's what their game plan is gonna be. Wyoming kind of did it last night as well. But 
Um, I'm just going to have to use my athleticism early. Jim Coyle, Indiana Sports Beat. I don't want to bang on the uh, travel issue a lot, but for, actually for all any of the, the three of you, I know how tired I am. And you guys just played in a, a very physical Big Ten tournament. Then you had a very physical game uh, on Tuesday night with the travel problems that you had. Woody always talks about how you're young and it doesn't really matter. But like I said, I know how tired I am. So it's got to affect you some. Are you feeling it? Um, Really, I think for, and I think I can speak for them too, it's like, you think of it as um, you're going in and maybe you don't get as much sleep as you want, but you're playing one game. And this one game is could be the last game of your season. So you really don't have time to like hone in on how tired your legs are because all you want to do is win that game. So it's basically whatever it takes. And maybe, maybe our legs are tired, but we're going to play through it and play as hard as we can. X. It looked like last night. Name and affiliation, please. Oh. Name and affiliation. Okay, George Montgomery, uh, Fox Sports National Radio. Um, watched you play all year, and it looked like last night you just didn't have your legs because a lot of most a lot of your shots were short. Did you feel like you're, you 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 were kind of tired from the Big Ten tournament, and your and your legs were weren't what were they supposed to be? Uh, no, nah, I mean I had I had enough rest. Uh, I mean I just put the ball short off the glass, and I kind I was a little nervous going to the game. I can't can't lie because it's a different stage. Uh, even though it's another basketball game, but I mean, I got my feet wet yes, uh, last night, so uh, I think I'm, I'm fine now. Uh, Jeff Rapp, John's Peaks.com. Race, uh, you, you had an off game the other night, um, very uncharacteristic for you. What happened? I mean, some people were asking, you know, did Ray sick? Did he get hurt? You know, just bad night? What happened? Uh, I think it was just an off night for me personally. Uh, I mean, in the Big Ten tournament, I had another off night. I mean, I'm just grateful to have Jordan Geronimo coming off the bench, uh, having a huge game for us, and he's capable of doing that for us. Uh, Trace had a big game, and X did what he had to do to help us get the win. But I mean, uh, coach said I'm a leader. I gotta, I gotta be better. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be that for, try to do that for our team uh, coming tomorrow. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, and yeah, X. Just to follow up on that, on what you just said. Uh, there's been a lot of teams who've had that play-in game where they were, when they got to Thursday or Friday, did have sort of those nerves out of the way. I mean, how much does it help to have already have one game under the belt in regards to what you'll feel like in regards to butterflies and that when that game starts tomorrow night? Uh, I mean, it's important. Uh, I mean, to get our feet wet, not not just me, but the whole team, because uh, it's actually our, it's all of our first time in the tournament. So, I mean, just to go just to go out there and play uh, and, and get another get another win win for us and go on to the next round is important. And I, I think I think everybody be ready going into the next game. Dave Griffiths with Fox 59 and Indy. This is a question for Trace. Trace, um, so many players can have their, uh, their legacies defined by NCAA tournament games. This is your first opportunity to play in such a game. How much have you looked forward to this opportunity? And now that you're here, just uh, what are your emotions kind of sitting around with, uh, with March Madness logos behind you and ready to, ready to show out on the big stage? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it is a big moment. But at the same time, you've got to stay level-headed, really. Um, I know Coach Woody's been put a big emphasis on me um, ever since that Big Ten tournament. I feel really confident in how I'm playing. But at the same time, other guys like this guy right next to me, X, has been putting me in really good positions to score the ball. And um, we just got to keep playing how we've been playing. And um, a few of my teammates had a rough game coming off. Um, I think they had some pregame jitters. But coming into tomorrow night, I feel like everyone's going to be ready. We're going to take a couple questions from the Zoom room. Uh, Dustin, you may go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, X, basically, obviously, Wyoming likes to play uh, play slow. St. Mary's does as well. What do you think you sort of learned from uh, that game, basically, just in terms of dealing with that kind of slow, deliberate pace? Uh, I mean, I, mean, I, I just had to take the chances of, of when, we, when I get a rebound or when my teammates get a rebound and, and, and try to get a, get a good push. And, and when I don't have a good push, set up the offense, uh, run my team, team like, like normal. Uh, I mean, because it's teams that, that's in the Big Ten that play the same way, uh, kind of like uh, Wisconsin, honestly. Uh, and, and, and you got to take smart shots, and you got to got to play 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 great defense, and you can't give them give them any any slip ups on defense uh, to where they where they can score the ball. And Tyler Tackman, you had a question. Go ahead. Uh, Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, going back to the got to your guys uh, playing troubles. Uh, what did you do to pass the time? Were you, were you able to sleep at all, or I don't know if it's too old school to like bring out a deck of cards, but. Um, I guess, what did you guys just do during those couple hours? Uh, I mean, we were just kind of hanging out, uh, talking to each other, goofing off, uh, really just enjoying each other's company, uh, talking to the coaches, talking to the players. 
I mean, there's not really much to do but hang out with each other. So, I mean, once the plane got off, I know a lot of us were asleep on and off. But uh, in the meantime, we were really just hanging out. And we made a TikTok with Vyra. <laughs> <laughs> Trace, uh, considering where this team's gone the past week, have you allowed yourself to imagine what that locker room would be like tomorrow night if you walk out of here with a win? Um, yeah, um, I think it would be very exciting, and um, we're very capable of doing it, but it's going to be a hard, hard-fought hard game. Um, St. Mary's is a great team, especially defensively. So um, it's going to take our best game, and everyone's going to have to play their best um, to be able to walk out with a W. But getting that first true um, March Madness W and um, – how long, however long it's been, um, that'll be great for not only us, but for our program. Uh, Jeff Rapp, John Speaks.com. This is going to come a little bit out of left field, but like Cody Zeller, Mark Cuban, a bunch of people were tweeting about the, the new ball, how orange it was, was it was slick. Is it different? I mean, what's, if you guys could just to discuss it, what's, is it different? What's it like? Uh, I mean, it's, just, it's a rubber, it's a rubber ball. That's what it feels like. It's brand new. I mean, when, when it's broken into, it's, it's a good ball. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can recall my, probably my worst game that I had with it was probably Notre Dame when I when I went two for nine from three because the ball is just it's just different. It's just more sticky and it's hard to it's, it's a different English going off the back off, off the glass when you make layups. Uh, so I, I, I would say that that's probably different about it. Hey Trace, or, yeah, Trace, um, your dad's Dale Davis. I just want to know. Obviously, you talk to him a lot. What kind of information did he give you head, heading into this tournament? Um. Um, basically, the only thing that he really told me. After watching the Big Ten tournament, he just said that I just have to continue the way that I've been playing. Um, he said I'm doing a lot of good things for the team. So uh, we sat down and had dinner the night before we left, and he said um, just bring it to him. So basically, I'm just going to try to keep playing at that level. We have another question from the Zoom room. Tyler Tackman once again. Go ahead. Yeah, Coach uh, Woodson has talked about this year how he wants to build um, great men in the program, not just great basketball players. Um, what would you say is the, the biggest um, way that he has helped you become better men since you since you started playing for him? Um, I really just think, honestly, with Coach Woodson, it's just accountability. Um, he, he he's It's all about family. It's all about it's all about us as students and at, athletes second, honestly. And um, he puts a really big emphasis on that. He's almost like our, our dad in that sense where we can come to him for a lot of things and he's going to help us out and do whatever he needs to do. But overall, um, I've been blessed. I think I can speak for them too. I've been playing for him and uh, honestly just learning everything that he's done for us. Is, um, it's been a big impact on all of us. Uh, Mike, Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. You guys played Iowa in, uh, in the Big Ten tournament without, without Jordan. You played a lot of games without uh, Trey Galloway and Robert Finnessy. Do you guys, how fortunate do you feel now that you seem like you've got all the pieces in place? Uh, I think it's really good to have all our pieces in place uh, at the right time as well. I think we're playing some of our best basketball uh, as an all around team. Uh, but I mean, just having everybody healthy, uh, it just makes everything better. Uh, the vibe's better. Uh, you get a different spark from each and every person coming off of the bench. And uh, I think that Jordan and Trey and even having Rob uh, for the season right now, uh, it just really helps us out uh, in minutes and uh, just giving us those extra boosts coming off of the bench. We've got time for one more question. Yeah, uh, race, uh, Kevin Brockway, CNHI, race uh, plus nine on the boards last night. I think it was 16-6, second chance points. How, how important is that going to be to continue you guys just being aggressive there? Uh, second chance points are big in every single game. So uh, that's something that our coaches preach to, especially me and Trace and Jordan and big, uh, Michael Durr. But, uh, I mean, that's definitely emphasis for us in every single game. Uh, try to get second chance points, uh, even get a second shot up. I mean, if you can get more shots up, you can score more points. So. Uh, for us, that's a big emphasis uh, coming into every game. All right, Race Thompson, Xavier Johnson, Trace Jackson Davis, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we will have head coach Mike Woodson momentarily.
All right, joining us on the dais now is Indiana head coach Mike Woodson. Uh, coach, congratulations on your win yesterday. Thank Welcome you. to Portland. And uh, if you want to make an opening statement, go ahead, and then we will open it up to the media. Well, it's good to be back here in Portland. Um, we had a long trip last night, but we made it here safely, and I got to get our players program ready to play a good, well-coached team in St. Mary's and their ball club. Hey, Coach. Charlie Clifford, Wish TV out of Indy. How do great teams handle fatigue? I don't know if it's a complicated question or not, but what's your answer on that one? Well, all I can do is relate to the NBA when we made the, uh, the, the championship run in Detroit. Uh, it's a grind, man, and I've always said only the strong will survive, and that Detroit team, man, we were so battle-tested throughout the playoffs um, that they just refused to be tired and because they was chasing that title. And I think the teams, you know, when you look at all the good teams in March Madness, everybody wants to win a title. So really, there's no room to be tired. I mean, you know, yeah, we had a long flight. I get it. it took us a while to get here, but we got here safely. And, you know, this is what we signed up for. Hey, we, we're here to try to win a game to see if we can advance. I don't want to go home, and I hope these guys feel the same way. Jim Coyle, Indiana Sports Beat. Mike, Trace talked about uh, this is one game and you just have to focus to get past the fatigue. But is there anything that you're going to do to knowing ahead of time how tired these guys might be to change, uh, whether it's minutes doled out, rotations, things like that? Well, I mean, I'll take a, a, you know, as the game goes on, I mean, I coach pretty much by feel. You know, we only had three guys that played over 30 minutes last night. So a lot of guys should be fresh and eager and ready to play. It's kind of how I look at it. Um, but I would gauge it as we go along and, and see how guys are playing on the floor. And if they're not giving me anything, then I got to go elsewhere to try to find it. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Mike, uh, I know during the Big Ten tournament, Trace had talked a little bit about how breaking out of that slump that he had sort of been in for about a month or so was important to him. He's obviously been playing at a very high level here in his last week or so. What's been the uh, specifics to the difference in his game this last week compared to that month of February where he struggled? I don't know. I mean, I just think that he's, he's starting to find them. He was starting to find himself again. Um, and, you know, it doesn't hurt that he has a coach that's kind of screaming and in his ear a lot too. You know, I mean, trying to push him in the right direction. I thought the halftime of the Michigan game was, it could have gone totally bad for me and the team. Um, but as coaches, we always look to find ways to get players to step up and play. And I challenged him and like I said, he could have gone the other way, but he didn't. He responded and his play from that half time on has been tremendous, man. I mean, he's playing at such a high level, which is kind of nice to see, and we all, as a team, are benefiting from it. Uh, Coach Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. On Monday before Wyoming, you mentioned, you know, nobody talks about the fact that you guys played a lot of games without Rob Fennessy and, and Trey Galloway. What did you mean by that, and what kind of things do they bring to kind of complete you as a team there? Well, they bring some seniorship. I mean, Rob has been around a long time. You know, Gallo's still young. I get that. But when we put this roster together to start the season, those two guys were a big piece of the puzzle. And when you lose them, Rob being 15 games, I said 14 the other day, and, and uh, I mean, Galloway 15 and, and Rob 10, that's a big piece of the puzzle when you're talking about some of the games that we've lost, you know, down the stretch of games, you know, maybe they could have been the difference maker. I don't know, I'm just reaching, but they are a big part of what we do and we rely on those guys to help us win games. Woody, 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 Woody. George Montgomery, Fox Sports National Radio. 
you've been away from the, the college game for almost 40 years and stepping in, stepping in as the head coach. You, you've talked about this a little bit before. Are, you're kind of feeling your way. You're, are, how much advice are you getting from your assistants and how much advice are you just going on your own, your own cognizance? Well, I've always, you know, when you put a staff together, you got to work hand in hand. That's, I think, important when you're talking about trying to build a team and getting players to play at a high level. But when I coach, I always have coached on field um, based on what I see on both ends of the floor. And, and yeah, I get advice uh, from all over the place when you got coaches around you. But at the end of the day, you know, coaching, you got to make decisions very quickly. And um, I've always felt good about the decisions I make. They might not always be the right decisions, but that's just a part of coaching. Um, but I've always said, George, coaching is coach. I don't care what level it is. If you can get your team to buy into what you do uh, on the both ends of the floor, then you've done your job. Um, it's when they don't buy in and they go the other way is when you struggle. And this team has really allowed me to coach them along with my staff. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CMHI. Coach, uh, a lot of uh, analysts around the country, college basketball analysts, have, have described St. Mary's as being kind of a rugged team. Uh, I'm just curious about uh, what you've seen on film and some of the challenges that they're going to present on Thursday for you guys. Every team is rugged at, at this stage of the year. You know, I mean, I just came through a grueling Big Ten season, man, and you know, I mean, that was just brutal. The way, you know, they let you play and get after one another. And um, so, I mean, you know, I've, I've watched St. Mary's. They're a hell of a team. They're well coached. You know, Randy's been a, a part of this program for a long, long time, and he's seen a lot of players come and go. And they've had some good teams here. And, you know, this year, hell, they won 25 games. So you got to you got to give them a lot of credit because they've had a hell of a season. And so, you know, we got our hands filled. You know, we got to come and, and commit for 40 minutes on both ends of the floor and see what happens. Yeah, Coach, Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, I'm sure you know, obviously, those of us on the West Coast know how good St. Mary's has been for the past 15 or so years. Do your fans and do your players realize how good St. Mary's has been for the past 15 years or so? Well, I, I think they have. And, 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 you know, I don't let our players get too high or too low. At the end of the day, you got to respect whoever you play. And that's, that's professionalism. That's a part of sports. Um, so I don't think our guys are taking them lightly. Their record indicates they have had a hell of a year. And they're in the tournament just like we are. So, you know, both teams want to advance. You know, that's kind of how I look at it. Something's got to give. So only time will tell once the game gets started and finish. Mike, Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated. And yeah, I remember in our college days, we came to Portland once for a college tournament. and. Uh, well, I was curious uh, if you had any good uh, NBA memories as either a player or a coach here for anything that might have happened here in Portland. Well, I came here and <clears throat> when I was in college and playing the Far West Classic, and we got beat by Magic and that great team that went on to win the national title that year in the championship game. And, and then all my days of playing and coaching in the NBA of coming to Portland. I like Portland. It's a hell of a city. Um, so it's good to be back. Um, but it'd be even better if we can come out of here with a win. That's kind of how I look at it. <laughs> We're going to take a couple questions from the Zoom room. Uh, Dustin Dupirik, uh go ahead. Yeah, Dustin Dupirik, Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, Mike, obviously, uh, Parker and Miller have, have kind of struggled shooting the ball lately, but you've obviously stuck with them, uh, you know, giving them a bunch of minutes. What do you like about what you're getting from them outside of shooting and scoring? They're seniors. They're, they've been around. Um, I respect that. That's why I, I start them and I play them. Um, and 
they haven't shot the ball extremely well here of late, but I'm going to keep riding them until they do. And guys that are coming in off the bench are going to have to fill in around them and do their part as well, like Geronimo did last night, which was kind of nice to see. All right, back to the Zoom room. Uh, Tyler Tackman, go ahead. Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Uh, Coach, you had talked about a couple of days ago um, that you want to create uh, great men in the program because that's what Bob Knight did for you. Um, they came back on that. Is there like any memories or moments that were kind of transformative experiences for you that helped shape you, something that, that Bob Knight taught you? I think my biggest moment was my senior year when everybody thought it was over when I had the back surgery. Um, and Knight just stuck, stuck with me and hung in there with me. Man, that was a tough time for me. Um, you know, you play all your college career never being hurt, and then you get to your senior year and something that drastic happens to the point where doctors are telling you you'll never play. He hung, he, he hung in there and, and was patient until I was able, and, you know, he put all the good medical people around me, the, the, the uh, phys physician that I had do the surgery, uh, all the people who helped me get back, Doc Councilman and people like that who helped me get back on my feet, he hung in there with me and then he never forgot about me when I came back. Shit, he played me 40 minutes a game. And <laughs> that was kind of nice, you know, in terms of helping me get back on my feet and, and helping that team win the Big Ten title that year. So I have him to thank for that as well. Coach Jeff Rabjohns, Pigs.com. Obviously, Parker Stewart, Miller Cop, Race Thompson, they all struggled at the same time the other night, combined for only eight points. Was there anything in particular that you saw that said, hey, this is, when you go back and watch film, this is why they struggled? Or what happened with those three guys on Tuesday? Hey, again, if you go back and look at the, the game, even X, you know, X missed three, three, four layups. Race missed some layups. And I just think, you know, first time in the tournament, man, I'm not using that as an excuse. None of these guys have been in the tournament play. And I think they were a little edgy, you know, last night in terms of how we started the game. Neither team can make shots. I mean, I looked at the scoreboard at three, four minute mark, and it was. 1917. It was a really low scores, scoring game. So my, I felt good because our defense was pretty good, and I figured if whoever found some offense first had a shot and went in the game. And I thought we found it before they did. Mike Charlie Cliver again, Channel 8 Andy. You get through today. How do you address to tomorrow? Do you make any alterations to a normal game day schedule considering the weird arrival? No, I mean, we, I got them here. We slept in a little bit. Uh, coaches, we didn't really sleep. We started prepping, getting ready for these guys to get out of the bed and come down and eat a little bit. And then we walked through some things. And we're going to go back and walk through some things. We watch film. And then tomorrow morning, we'll get up and do our normal routine and get ready to play. Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. St. Mary's is like ninth in the country in defensive efficiency. What about the makeup of that team allows them to be really good at that part of the game? Well, again, I mean, they have a, a senior team that's been together a while, well-coached team. Uh, their system is in place. And um, that's, that puts them in a good position on both ends of the floor, I think. Uh, but. We've been pretty good defensively as well all year. Uh, had our ups and downs offensively. So we're going to have to rely on our defense to put us in a good position offensively to win this game. We're going to take our last question from the Zoom room. Uh, Tyler, go ahead. Coach, are, are there any uh, favorite memories you have from late night road trips in the NBA? And, and was there anything um, you know, someone you would call or foods you would have that would get you through those? I didn't hear that very well. We, you, can, yeah, can you repeat that? Can we get the a little bit more audio, please, for the Zoom? Tyler, go ahead and repeat your question. Yeah, Coach, um, going. I, I, do you have any favorite memories um, from 
from road trips, late night road trips in the NBA, and and what are some things that uh, maybe help you get through that, whether it be someone you talked to or, or snacks you had or anything like that? Well, like I told the guys, you know, we could never complain. They can anyway, and I know I won't about travel because in the NBA back in the old days, man, it might have been the worst traveling in the world. I mean, there were red eyes that we had to catch to catch the next game the next day, and we're sleeping in chairs in the airport, you know, trying to get where we got to go. But that's what we signed up for as an NBA player, and it was a part of it. So they got it pretty damn good right now, I think. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have. Right. Coach Woodson, thank you very much. Thank Best you. of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, recording of the press conference is available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.verit1.com, and the transcript will be provided by ASAP and posted momentarily. Next press conference, 5 p.m., with the student-athletes from Akron.